Creatine supplementation. So for this one to make sense for people, we'll have to review pathophysiology. I mean, I don't have to go into full pathophysiology, but we'll have to talk about it a little bit. Creatine supplementation, what creatine does, generally it's used in bodybuilding and athletics. The reason is because it increases your phosphocreatine stores, which allows you, which is an energy source, which allows you to pump out another couple sets. So when you're training or competing, having creatine in your system allows more energy to be utilized. So let's say I'm doing my bench press and I can get to 10 reps. Well, if I have sufficient creatine load, I might be able to get 12 because I have another little energy store that gets me another couple reps, which then is why it's been used a lot in bodybuilding, weightlifting type sports. It's now being used in a lot of other sports, obviously just people in ath athletics because it increases energy storage. Pathophysiology for concussion, what concussion ultimately results in, so concussion injury happens, you get an excitatory phase that happens, you get massive increase in neural firing, and then you get a breakdown of the mitochondria within the cell. So you don't get the same amount of production of energy. Your ATP stores start to plummet over the next few days. ATP is our energy. Creatine essentially creates ATP. So now here you are with lowered ATP. So the thought became, what if we were to supplement creatine? Could we boost ATP stores and help speed the recovery of the concussion injury? Because this is temporary, right? You get this shutdown of mitochondria, but it's not permanent. It comes back, right? It's just that it's, they're kind of offline for a little bit, a little bit dysfunctional, but they gradually pump out that calcium that's been affecting them and they gradually kind of restore and come back online and then you're back to you know, full function. So the idea was, what if we were to supplement with creatine? Could we speed that process? And so there's been a couple trials, and the most that I've seen has been done on animals. I haven't seen any human trials, and the last that I've heard, there was a couple that were underway, uh, I think it was in California. So I'm still kind of waiting on the evidence on the human trials, but the animal trials that have been done have been quite promising. The only thing I will say with creatine is that it requires some loading to get your stores up to a point. So generally, people will supplement with about five grams per day, typically with creatine. It's just kind of a maintenance dose. But oftentimes when people are getting into it, they'll have this loading period where they'll do, you know, let's say 20 grams per day for the first three days to get their stores up, and then they'll maintain with, let's say, five grams per day, okay? In the scenario of a concussion, all of this stuff happens really quickly you're hitting your, your low state at that three to five day mark. So to start supplementing with creatine after concussion, you'd have to start very, very quickly after, I would think, anyway, we'll see when actual evidence comes out on this. This is just my personal um, you know, thoughts on it. So I think what we're gonna find with this is that the optimal protective effect of creatine is going to be to have adequate stores before the injury occurs. And it's similar to magnesium, right? Like I just said, calcium gets into the mitochondria and gums up the works in terms of creating ATP. Calcium and magnesium compete with each other uh, for kind of binding sites. So if your levels of magnesium are high, you prevent the same level of calcium from getting in potentially. So magnesium is one of those things that could be a protective effect. I think creatine is gonna be found to be along those lines as well. The good thing about creatine is that it's safe, it's effective, there's, there's no, well it's safe, I shouldn't say it's effective yet, but it's safe, there's no real side effects to it. Uh, sometimes it creates some GI symptoms for people, like loose stools, things like that. Same with magnesium can do that, but Ultimately, it has a very, very high safety profile, and it's not going to hurt, and it may help. So if there's three supplements, I know we have a lot of you know, professional fighter, MMA people, a lot of professional athletes that follow us and watch these podcasts. If I'm, a, if I'm an athlete, knowing what I know right now, and I'm going to take three things to help me from concussion potentially, it's going to be magnesium, creatine, and fish oils. Those are, if I'm gonna pick, those are my big three, I would say, okay? I'm, I, I mean, I should ask Dr. Herkel what he thinks, uh, what his big three would be, and maybe we'll have him on again to talk about that. But right now, in my mind, big three uh, would be fish oils, magnesium, and creatine. Again, not a lot of human trials on any of these, but I think we're starting to realize that 
these particular types of supplements have what's called a pleiotropic effect. They're able to influence multiple pathways and help in a variety of ways that are affected by concussion. So it makes theoretical sense that they would work. And some of the animal trials on this, at least in the preliminary, have been showing that there is positive effect there. We need that replicated in human trials.